it's Tobin. This is Fuzzy Tolerance, screencast number 10, hash. Now that kind of hash, you hippies, we're talking about URL hash. Now the URL hash you've all seen, basically at the end of a URL you'll see a pound sign and some stuff. And you typically have that associated with things like anchor tags, where it's an internal link. You click on that link and it jumps you to somewhere else on a page and it changes the location bar to where that anchor tag is. Now, I've seen different things about using that for browser history, which are interesting. Vish wrote a really cool blog post on how he used that to uh, retain state in this ajax -E GIS application retain state and also be kind of the foundation on how the application works. It's all driven by hash. Really, really cool idea. I thought it would work well on this other project I'm working on. I put it there. Not only does it work well, it actually makes the code a bit cleaner as well. So, just had to try it. Tried it and liked it. Figured I'd do a quick screencast on doing things in a hash-driven sort of way. So let's get going. Right now we have squat. So let's get something to start with. Google Maps API. I could prepare this ahead of time, but there's uh, two problems with that. One, I'm lazy. And two, I think it might actually be helpful to see how I go about making this stuff because, well, I'm stupid. And you might think of a better way, or it might be helpful to you, I don't know. That, but not that. View page source. Here we've got a Google Map sample that basically geocodes and adds a marker. That's yeah, perfect for what we need. We're just going to grab all this code, dump it right in our blank page. I increased the font size, whiners. Okay, so now it works just like Google's thing. We're ready to get started with some hashing fun. Now, first thing about hashing you should know, browser support is a little iffy. Basically, that means like old versions of Internet Explorer and Safari don't natively support the hash change event, which is part of the HTML5 spec. That's okay. There's a really small jQuery extension, which essentially enables all browsers to use that hash change event, and we're good. So here's our typical, this is your typical example Google Docs page. It initializes the map. It's got a little function to geocode the address. So first thing we should do is stick some jQuery in here. And I just have that as a little code snippet. Get it from Google's uh, CDN. Next thing we want is that extension. And we're just going to dump it right in the page. This extension was made by Cowboy Ben Ullman. And it's a really simple extension and it works great. Let's grab the minified code for that. I haven't looked at how it works but what I imagine it does is uh, basically for browsers that don't support that window hash change event it just sets up a timer to just watch your URL bar and when it changes it'll fire that event. I, I, that could be all wrong, but I, that's how I imagine it works. So now I've got that function in. I tell you what, let's go ahead and make a jQuery window load event. Uh, typo. Bing, bada boom, bada bing. Oh, bad intentions. The definition of bad indentions is any indention level that I'm not currently using. Window load function, and here we'll call the initialize map because calling it from the body tag is kind of lame. So we've got that, and everything should still be working fine. Now, let's start doing cool stuff. 
first let's go back to Ben's site and we'll grab this little tiny bit of code which is uh, give me the clean version thank you and we'll just we're gonna put that in the document ready event and jQuery I think I've talked about this before but document ready is kind of the uh, not everything's done loading but you can probably do some things without killing yourself so I use that for everything except for like the map load because sometimes the map is not quite ready for you and it can bite you right in the ass so let's paste in that little function from our extension what this is doing is every time your hash changes it will fire this event let's test that out we'll go down to where it's geocoding and we'll change the hash when it geocodes hash equals and we'll just grab this thing dot lat and we'll add a comma and get the loon. Google likes loon. I usually put lawn there, but eh, teaches him. So now, when it geocodes, it should pop us up an alert box telling us that the hash has changed. And there's the latitude, longitude. You'll see it writes it right up in the URL bar. So we've got our hash changed there. Yippee. So that's working. Let's do some cool stuff. So you can see how neat this is. First, let's break the uh, add marker out into its own thing. It'll do lat long, long, Google, long. All right, function lat long. Hmm, where does that thing come from? I still in there we've got a little bit of weirdness where is that there's a non clothed something there let's see hey there's that one there's that one and that one closes that one oh huh boy that could have screwed us up that's why I like Komodo edit over say notepad it it's kind of because I, I suck and it helps me out function add marker so let's take all this crap out put it over here now we don't have the results thing I don't like to pass the internal like Google objects for that just because it limits on how we can use it as, as you're about to see so well let's just make a Var, uh, var the location. Uh, I make lame variable names. And that would be new Google Maps. Maps. Let learn. I think this is the syntax. I can't remember my wife's phone number, but I remember crap like that. I don't. I don't know why. I think that's it so then we can just drop that in here and drop that down here and I think that'll work and what we're going to do is from our hash watcher here first we should make sure there's something in the hash if window.location.hash.length we'll say greater than one because we don't want it to just be the pound sign which can happen so we got something in the hash we'll do add well first let's break the hash out the hash equals window.location dot hash dot and let's get rid of the pound sign 
replace it with Zippo, and let's split it on that comma. Yeah, does that look okay to you? That looks okay. So now we'll go add marker and we'll want the first element in that array and the second element in that array. Can it be that easy? Did I just break something? Let's find out. Oh, we're See, we already have that hash in there, so nothing's changed. Delete that. Look at that. Look at what we just did. Oh my goodness. See, right now it adds a marker. All it does is change the hash to that X and Y coordinate. When the hash has changed, it detects it here and adds a marker based on those coordinates. Really cool. One, it cleans up your code, because you're very rarely adding a marker in one place. So you can just change the hash. And you can change the hash to do multiple things at once. So, that's cool. The other thing it does for us is right now, see we're on Sydney. Let's go to Charlotte. And notice the hash has changed, and that's why it fired that event. Let's go to Denver. All right, went to three different places. You notice these arrow bars are up here. Let's go back. Look at that. It went right back to the last hash. It changed. It went back in the history to this last URL location, which is hash for Charlotte. The site detected that the hash had changed and went back to that location. So now we have forward, backward working. How cool is that? You have in your hash, in, in your navigation history, you can go straight back to different locations in an Ajaxy type application. That is really cool. Now let's take it one step further. Let's just make sure every time the window loads, we are going to call that hash change event which basically means it is going to process it on window when that page loads, whether it's changed or not. So, save that. Let's just open a new tab with that location of Denver. Put that URL in. Went straight to Denver. So now not only do you have history, but somebody could be looking along copy that URL and send it to someone, or bookmark that URL, and pull it back up, it'll go straight back to what that last hash state was. It'll detect that hash state, and go straight to that location and put that marker there. So you don't have to have some permalink link on your page with some URL arguments that 9 out of 10 people will never ever find. It does all that for us and it simplifies the code. That is fantastic. Now, you can add more than one argument on here, and the way Vish does that is he puts in a slash. So you pound, then there's one argument, then another argument. So you can see how he's how you can put multiple things in. Well, what he's doing there, I imagine, in the code is just doing a, an initial split based on that slash to get the set of arguments. And I've done that on our... Uh, quality of life dashboard I'm working on. So when you pick a different metric, you'll see it writes that up in the hash with a slash there. The second argument would be a neighborhood if you had one picked. So now we've got commute by motorcycle. That's a boring one. There's no colors. Commute by bus. And you see it's got commute bus argument up there and the neighborhood number. So you can go to another tab, open up that URL, it'll go straight to commute by bus to that neighborhood. So that's how you'd put multiple different arguments out in the URL hash. You basically just, you can split them multiple times. Like the second argument I have being a neighborhood or an XY coordinate. So if we put in, you know, an address, you'll see it's a coordinate up here. And what it does basically is it looks at that second argument and says, hey, there's a comma in it, it's a coordinate. 
and then you can publish for your site an API where people can look at those arguments and basically link directly into your stuff. So really, really handy. That's it. That is uh, the hash and how you can use that to save state. That was a really great article by Vish and it inspired me to go try a couple of those things. And now I will probably be doing that in all of my apps. Now you'll want to make sure when you do this stuff that you do a little bit of trapping in case somebody put ha puts crap in their hash. One of the eight principles of uh, web design is forgiveness. If your user does something unexpected, don't put them in in you know error message hell. It should handle that gracefully. So you want to do a little bit of checking. Like here, we'd make sure the length of the hash is two, that there's actually a comment in there in two different elements. We might even check to make sure both those elements are numbers. You can do things like that to make sure crap doesn't get in the hash. Well, that's it. Uh, next month, I'm hoping to do a podcast on Tile Mill. It just came out with version 0 0.9, which runs on everything now, including Windows. And it's a fantastic app. I was going to do that this month, and I totally ran out of time. And I thought this would be quicker, and it was still pretty cool. Well, that's podcast number 10. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.